Hey guys, so I'm on the side of the road. My Chevy Cruze 1.4 is overheating on me very bad. Um, I'm gonna show you how to bleed it correctly. First, we need to take that out. Be gentle with it not to uh, tear it up. I'm going to screw it out, make sure not to let it fall down and lose it. Okay, we took this out. This is called your bleeder screw or bleeder valve. We're going to set it over here. Make sure your car is somewhat level. So we're gonna fill this and keep filling it until air leaks out of that and then all water starts coming out of that hole. I am literally stranded about two hours away from home and this is the only thing I have left until I have to call a tow truck. I don't have any radiator coolant, just bottled water, which will be okay until I get home to put some Dex cool in it. I'll pick up the bottles after the video. Right now, I just want to show you what to do. Nothing coming out yet. I'm gonna go get some more. See how it keeps going down. It's really empty. Probably have a small leak. A lot of times it leaks from this thermostat housing or from your water pump itself. These engines are pretty fragile. A lot of plastic parts. Okay, now you can see it's bleeding. It looks pretty dirty inside too. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it because there's no air in it. And that's how you get the air out. And don't tighten it super hard, just tighten it until it wants to stop on you, and then that's it. All right. Don't tighten it harder than how it is to tighten the whole time. So when you're turning it the whole time, that strength, just do that until it stops, and then put maybe one more pound, that's it. It's a really small opening with a bunch of threads. It's gonna be fine, especially when it heats up, it swells. So now we're gonna fill it up more until it gets to the cold line. I'm gonna put a little bit more than the cold in it because because uh, we have to you know, fill up the heater core as well. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. And once again, you know, this water is saving me from being stranded. If it's the bad water pump, then nothing else I can really do. So after we got all the air out, I'm gonna put this on until it stops. All right, saw it click. 
this hanger's broken so I'm gonna buy another reservoir just so it stays where it's at because eventually it can crack from vibrating now we're gonna start the engine And we're going to set the heat all the way to max. Going to let it run. It's going to be pretty cold. Well, somewhat. We're going to let it run with the heat all the way up. This is also a good thing to check if your water pump's even working. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. That way you know if you can make it home or not. Because if you have a bad water pump, you're, you're not going to go anywhere. You're just going to keep overheating very quickly. So I'm getting really hot heat now. Really good. So now I'm going to accelerate it since my engine's warm. I've been driving for hours. If your engine is cold and it's been sitting, then you want to let it warm up for a minute. But since I'm already past that point, I even show you 128,000 miles and I just put a brand new water pump, thermostat, hoses, a lot of things on this car. So these cars are pretty finicky. I would say they're very unreliable. I'm going to go ahead and go between 2,000 and 2,500 RPMs. We're going to keep it that way for a few minutes. We want to see if it overheats and we're also getting all the bubbles, all the air out of the heater core since the radiator is full. So we're gonna see how it does. Hopefully I don't have a failed water pump. Probably only has 3,000 miles on it. My turbo is also messing up pretty bad. Doesn't have any power, so like I was saying, these cars have so many troubles. It's always good to take care of them before you go on big trips. Make sure when you put your radiator fluid in, you use the Dex Cool. very hot and you just want to keep checking for this heat to keep going up alongside this and this heat will go up to about 130 Fahrenheit maybe 140 but I mean when it feels scorching hot and it's not overheating after two three minutes of running while it's sitting that's a very good indication your cooling system is going to function right when you're back on the road. still hot. You want to make sure it stays hot these two minutes. And it's staying right on that line. You can see how it's not even moving at all. So I think we got a good cooling system. It just dropped so low on fluid from the little leaks it has 
I'm gonna have to go through all the hoses, make sure all the little rubber seals and all that were put on. I uh, had my worker put it all on and he's messed up a few times and he probably messed up on one of these. So I'm gonna have to check all that. If yours is still overheating after you filled it full of fluid and this is not even getting hot, you may have a failed thermostat or a failed water pump. If you have a failed water pump, don't start it anymore. Just get it towed. Or if you can go get the part and put it on here, you know, if you're confident doing that, just don't risk blowing your engine. It's a thermostat. You probably won't have any hot heat, or you may have hot heat, but your temperature thing's gonna be off a bit. Just drive it kind of slow back home, but you should be able to make it. And check for leaks, make sure it's not leaking crazy. You may have to keep refilling it every 30 minutes or so. But this car is good to go, so I'm gonna be able to go home to save myself from, tow, from a tow bill and maybe even a hotel. So hopefully this video was helpful guys. If you have any of the Chevy Cruises with the 1.4, this also works for Buicks, um, like the GMC, a, a lot of cars. So thanks for watching guys and please like and subscribe if this helped.